final episode, I'm taking it one step further to not only see how important trends are to the people who work in the industry, but also how the business operates. I'll be talking to fashion experts within magazine companies, e-commerce and high-end fashion retail. London Fashion Week Festival offers a shopping experience for the general public after Fashion Week. A ready-to-wear after party where designer retail is accommodated to every taste and budget. Even so, the London Fashion Festival still holds its exclusive essence by permitting customers to still pay for entrance tickets and upgrade to specific packages for more Fashion Week perks. Similar jumble sales and pop-up stores are often available during the Fashion Week frenzy. But just because Fashion Week is over, it doesn't mean the shopping stops there. In March, I visited DS UK, also known as Designer Sample Sale. I spoke to Elaine Foster Gandhi, who is the founder of DS UK, selling high fashion at high street prices. I'm Elaine from Designer Sales UK, it's my company. Um, Designer Sales has been running for oh, almost 30 years. I had the idea of borrowing a friend's studio and setting up my first sample sale, designer sale, in 1989 in Soho, in Lexington Street. We set up a sale there, had some amazing designers, probably about four or five brands then, John Galliano, Jasper Conran, Rifat Osbeck, names of the 80s. And it was a major success from day one. Uh, we had queues going around the block, which was brilliant. Brit Lane for 10 years, and really when Brit Lane wasn't, they didn't have any fashion in Brit Lane. There was a lot of art stuff going on in Brit Lane, but it was early days in Brit Lane before the Truman Brewery really set up. Now the Truman Brewery is a major space, and major artists, a major fashion space. And I brought all my designer sales stuff. I, bought, I put on events, I put on catwalk shows, and then I decided to move to Chelsea. Just decided it was time to move out of Brit Lane, actually. There was, uh, there was lots of kind of, there's too many sample sales and they weren't unique anymore. Um, there was lots of copycat companies and so it was time to move on actually. And so Chelsea is a great space for us. The sample sales that we hold, featuring lots of London Fashion Week designers as well as up and coming brands. We've got a label called Kim Kwang, we've got Martin Jalgaard, um, um, and she's worked with Westwood, Vivian Westwood. We've got lots of, yeah, we've got some Burberry, some Mulberry, and um, yeah, some, some nice, nice pieces out there. The website draws in a lot of car customers, so we don't really have to advertise. Um, uh, we have a very strong presence. Actually, we had a website presence before a lot of the fashion designers actually even had websites. We've got a presence on Instagram and Twitter, um, and we do a lot of our promotion on, on those platforms. So yeah, I think uh, social media is really important for any business. Yes, I definitely think that there's a market. There's, there's a market. I mean, sample sales are everywhere. We all know that now. And I was really, you know, I was the pioneer of that. So that's great. It's great that this is, it's everywhere now. Lots of designers holding the sample sales. That's brilliant. Uh, early on in the, at the beginning of designer sales, I packed everything into a lorry and I took it up around the road, around, around the country. I went to Scotland and I went to the Midlands. And, um, yeah, so it's. I think that what I do is is really it's a great it's a great uh, business model, and uh, I think that there's there's room for more you know for it to continue growing in that way. With discounted prices of Elaine's stock selling at fifty to ninety percent off the current retail price, you could have your next designer look way in advance for next season's Fashion Week. Elaine's online sales are just as important as her store sales. In the same way, Fashion Magazine Jungle is artistically, culturally and commercially involved in the digital world. With the rise of the digital age and easy accessibility to mobile phones, social media and the internet, Jungle has successfully catered to both an audience through print and online. 
I made my way over to Jungle's office in East India, London to meet Editor-in-Chief Ali Faroji and Fashion Assistant Jasmine Banbury, who tell me all about Jungle and how the magazine functions. My name is Ali Faroji, I'm the editor of Jungle magazine. Um, I'm 27 and I uh, studied mechanical engineering at Loughborough University. I am Jasmine Banbury, I'm 23 years old and I study fashion design and development and I am the fashion assistant for Jungle magazine. Jungle uh, was created um, to inspire and empower people through creativity and um, we saw as a you know online magazine and we went to print in 2016 which is quite exciting and we are now stuck in over 15 countries around the world when I first started jungle it was you know it was a small um, idea it was like a, a almost like an escape but um, I always had bigger vision for it and that vision developed over time to become this you know media powerhouse um, so that's how we you know broke it down into smaller steps to make it into a reality I feel like I've contributed to the Jungle Aesthetic during London Fashion Week through social media by Instagram and Snapchat and kind of showing a unique vision of London Fashion Week, particularly how the team moves and how the team goes about its day-to-day -day during Fashion Week. And it's, it's about creating the unique identity that no one really sees in a usual fashion magazine. Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram and Snapchat. But um, the one that I feel like, um, especially within the past um, year, has been growing quite rapidly is Instagram because it's quite visual and it's quite quick. Um, for people to engage with us, so that's the one that I see um, the future is that really. Um, I think it's aiding and hindering, it reaches a larger audience which may not be able to go to the fashion shows, may not be at the career level to get into the fashion show but can still watch it and still shop the looks but it also takes away the magic of the fashion industry particularly so it's coming from a fashion design background it is that magic which allows people into the fashion industry and as soon as you start broadcasting it to multiple different audiences of different different work ethics different ages and different backgrounds it almost becomes like easily access which takes away I don't know the magic I guess So one of the elements that uh, elements that makes jungle different in, in a way is the element of timelessness. We we try to focus on uh, stories about people and how they use their creativity to make something out of themselves. Um, so we never focus on any trends or anything like that. Although the magazine comes out twice a year, so it's got the seasonal um, autumn, winter, and s spring, summer. But we focus on the stories about the people, and everything else comes as part of that. I think it's going to speed up and up and up, particularly how the whole blogosphere has been around for many years now. It's going to start becoming like the bloggers will be the models for the brands and then eventually who's going to be next? We're going to lose almost like the uniqueness of the fashion industry it's going to become so easily accessible that people are eventually going to say you know what I don't like this let's go back to the tradition let's go back to how it used to be basically whatever we do is to inspire and empower people through creativity so we, we pick the people that we feel like just do that um, obviously in terms of aesthetics for example we pick people that we feel you know resonate with the audience that we've got and we're not all about like you know being commercial and you know um, being really out there um, for, for me jungle is a place that you know people immerse themselves into and enjoy so we pick the contributors that we feel like you know they have the same values that they can contribute to our vision When it first came around, I really liked it. I thought it was great. It kind of, you have designers like Tom Ford, who's 
completely churning up the the seasons and what collections are available and whether it's men's or women's wear because of the see now buy now idea and it means that we are no long no longer constrained to the kind of the seasonal change like it's not tradition but then again it's the whole magic thing it's it's a mystique of fashion it's making it too easy accessible to everyone it's it's churning fashion in and out and in and out and it's becoming quicker and it's just there's a lot of tradition and craftsmanship behind clothing and lines that are created that we're almost forgetting about that and we're not giving designers the opportunity to really invent and really design something that's beautiful we're rushing them to sell and it's becoming a lot more about money a lot more money driven and investment driven and it's just it's moving away from purely what fashion is I've travelled to Manchester where it's become the home of top seven online fashion firms such as Pretty Little Thing, Misguided and Boohoo, who have certainly put the city on the map. I met up with the women behind the gorgeous outfits seen on the models on Boohoo's website. I spoke with stylist Daniela Suarez about the growth of e-commerce and if it's here to stay. Hi, I'm Daniela Suarez and I am senior fashion stylist at Boohoo. Boohoo started off in 2006 and has been growing since so as a growing company we've been growing with the trends and growing with new technology and that sort of thing so every year we reflect and we look back on things that we can do better and how we can move forward in terms of what everyone's doing what we can do that's better than that and that sort of thing so that's how we sort of look at everything look at what's in trend have weekly meetings on how we can improve and how we can stay on top of everything that's going on. We have two teams at Boohoo, so we have the e-com team which looks after the whole gallery and the website and we have the creative team which looks after all our TV campaigns or our creative shoots that whether you see online or our campaigns. So both teams will meet and when a creative team do their TV stuff and all that sort of campaigny stuff we will sort of take with what they've done there and sort of maybe tone it down a little bit and reflect on gallery so we are in synergy and remaining as the sort of best online retailer is by understanding our customer we have a six customer profile so understanding what each of them want and delivering to each of them not just favoring one over than the other we look at ourselves a bit like ASOS. We want to be able to supply to more than just one person. We want to supply to more than one customer. While our owner, Mahmood, saw that Misguided was opening a shop and we thought, oh, why doesn't Boohoo own, do their own shop? And he thought, why should I spend all my money on you know, having a shop like Misguided? when I can in just fact do the same from online and even sell more. So the thing is, we want to stay online because for us it works now. At the moment we don't see ourselves going to any stores or anything like that at the moment because as trends go on, shopping online is what's working for, for people at the moment. And unless there's a drastic change in the future, we don't see ourselves having to you know having a shop maybe a pop-up shop would be different because that's something temporary but online right now is the future with the power of e-commerce and social media continuing to grow our industry speakers gave their insight into keeping ahead in the digital world technology is amazing as users on the internet want to feel part of the conversation and engage on any fashion journey whether it be reading a fashion story or shopping online it's the simplicity and clarity of images that keep fashion audiences captivated by finding new ways of filtering new content through our social media feeds effectively. Make sure you share, comment, like and subscribe and thank you for joining me on this fashion journey.